Lower back pain is the leading physical complaint right across the world, but help may be at hand. Chronic pain sufferers taking part in a new treatment devised by Curtin, Macquarie and Monash universities have reported dramatic results. Not only did they experience reductions in pain and the related disability impact, the relief remained one year later. Peter O'Sullivan is John Curtin Distinguished Professor at Curtin University in Perth, and he joins us now. Peter, welcome. This is groundbreaking research. Can you tell us about how it works? Yeah, so thanks for that. It's, um, it's, uh, it's been an exciting uh, uh, process for us, I suppose, and a, a lot of it comes back to understanding how chronic back pain impacts on people. What we know now from the research is that chronic low back pain is not so much, well, the common belief is, is that people have a view that the pain doesn't go away. There must be something serious wrong. They often get scanned. They often get something shown on a scan that tells them something's damaged or got arthritis or a degenerate disc. They then become overprotective and start guarding their body and avoiding doing stuff. So this intervention really turns it all on its head to say, well, actually, what we know from the research is that back pain is not a good measure of tissue damage when, when it's chronic, when it doesn't go away. In fact, what we know is that when you become overprotective of your back and you start avoiding stuff and protecting your body, it tends to make the pain worse. And so this intervention kind of turns around a lot of the common messages that we get around back pain that, you know, if your back's sore, you better be careful how you move, you've got to sit up straight, you know, careful when you bend. It says actually the spine loves movement, that moving in a normal way and engaging with activity, even if it's painful, is healthy for your body and actually protecting your body is not helpful. So it kind of takes people through an unraveling process of getting them out of being overprotective and a view that their body is damaged and they need to protect it to building their confidence back to get them back to living. And of course that doesn't happen overnight. That can, that takes about three months process. And for some people a little bit longer. Well, this really does sound revolutionary, turning everything on its head. And I understand that a so-called whole person approach was taken. What yeah. does that mean? Yeah, so that's right. Well, what we know is we know that our thoughts about pain, our emotional responses to pain and our, our behaviours around pain and the way we respond to it can make pain worse. You know, you've got, a, you've got an arthritis in your back, you know, you better be careful with it. People become frightened. And so we know that pain-related fear, and that's really normal when you've got pain, is that you lose your confidence to move naturally. You overprotect your body. You start tensing muscles up. It's like walking around, clenching your fist all day, wondering why your back's sore. Uh, and that's something we know that people in pain get, where what we take them through is a kind of process of understanding, shifting their mindset to go actually, you know, a more positive mindset around pain in your body, um, becoming confident, less fearful, and learning to relax your body and break these rules that we set up around posture and lifting and movement is actually okay and healthy for you. And so that mind-body connection is about your thoughts, emotions, and the body responses that can unravel these pain processes. Now, do these findings relate to one specific kind of ailment, or do they potentially benefit a wider range of pain types? Yeah, so that's a really good question. We deliberately in this trial included pretty much anybody. <laughs> so we we not, we included anyone from the eighteen right through. So we had people from eighteen to eighty in this trial because we we believe this approach makes sense irrespective of your age. Uh, we included people with all kinds of stuff on their scans. Um, we included people with other health problems, you know, because we know that back pain is commonly linked to other mental health challenges. So we included people with those kinds of problems, other health issues as well, other pain problems. So we were really inclusive in this trial because we believe that um, this intervention made sense for a whole variety of conditions. I mean, one thing I found really interesting is that uh, physiotherapists who assisted in the study actually changed their treatment methods as a result of what you found. So can you tell yeah, us a bit uh, more about that? So, you know, I am a physiotherapist and I essentially, you know, went through my basic training with a very different mindset, you know, with this whole view of, oh, you know, you've got to sit up straight and lift with a straight back and bend your knees and, you know, we... It's a whole mindset that goes with what you do with back pain. 
Um, and through our research journey, we've seen that actually most of those are things that are driven by that belief. They're not based on evidence. And yet we tell people this stuff all the time. That back pain is very rarely seen on a scan for the majority of people, particularly when it becomes persistent, that actually you can sit and move in any way you want. It's okay and it's safe to bend your back. It's good for you. So it took quite a lot of training to train the physios out of it. Um, and often the physios have been in, in a situation where they have an expectation. They put on themselves of, you know, I've got to do something to the patient, where what this process was was much more about coaching my role as a coach and less as a someone trying to fix you. So there's less lying down in bed and more about teaching people to be confident in their body, um, learning t- to reconnect with their body, learning to move their body, learning to get strong, and then most importantly, learning to get back to the things in love they in life that they love. Because we know that back pain takes people away from that stuff. People it disrupts their ability to work, to exercise, to play with your kids, to do physical activity. So we made those things the goal of the care so that we got them back to doing that stuff. So what are next steps in, in your research and how might your findings be used at scale by physicians and the yeah. medical community at large? Yeah, so it's a really great question. And look, there are some broad messages, I think, that are really important um, around this. And that is we need to spend more time coaching, educating um, and empowering people to self-care for their own back. We have a health system that's pretty good at doing stuff to people. It's not very good empowering people to actually self-manage. And I think that's a really important thing. Um, Also, the messages that we give people, we give lots of messages around, oh, be careful with your back, you know, sit up tall, brace your core, careful when you bend. But actually, the spine is designed for movement. It's designed to be used. Avoiding activity and movement is unhealthy for the back. So I think we need some broad messaging around just building confidence in people with pain to actually re-engage with living. Uh, But when people are stuck, we need to upskill healthcare practitioners to take people on that journey because people can't often get there on their own. Um, And so we need to upskill the workforce um, or to upskill people in the workforce to be able to deliver this kind of intervention. And probably the other really important thing is we need to have funding to support it because, you know, for physiotherapy, you know, the funding is based on consultation. So whether you're seen for 10 minutes or an hour, the rebate's the same. And that's crazy because it tends to drive very short consultations that reinforce passive, more passive treatments. And it doesn't take people on this journey to relearn how to, you know, re-engage and care for their own backs. <laughs>